I'm actually very pleased to come to Morocco after a very long time. And what I see is really lots of positive development, which is extremely encouraging. And really, I believe there is a very good uh, policy on bringing Morocco uh, further. And I think His Majesty, this is uh, just an amazing development, what uh, what I, I, I could see. Now, the purpose of coming is really to, to meet our partners, RIC International, and to explore the opportunities on how we could bring our expertise, our knowledge in order to support uh, the program of the government and the industry to use desalination of seawater as a source of water supply to complement the resources which are practically lacking and declining. And we believe that we can add value based on our experience to that. I am extremely confident that Morocco is a very good place for desalination, particularly combined with renewable energy. I'm very confident that this policy will will bring will will bring more water security on the long run to the country, and um, we are ready to to bring our expertise, to share our expertise, and contribute uh, to to make this uh, strategy a full success. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous présenter votre technologie et en quoi elle diffère de celle existante au Maroc? We Practically for the desalination of seawater, there are two, two technologies. One technology is the traditional technology, which is already fairly old, which is a thermal technology practically, is a distiller. You evaporate the water, you condensate the water, and then you have clean water, which has been in service for the last 60, 70, 80 years. And this was also the systems done firstly in the United Arab Emirates, always connected with power stations where heat, waste heat could be used from a power station as a cheap source of energy in order to do the desalination of water. And uh, over the last uh, 20 years, we can say reverse osmosis has become a very mature technology, a very safe technology, and of course also a very cost competitive technology. And this is the reason why today majority or practically all desalination plants are made by reverse osmosis. You abstract, you take water from the sea through an intake system. There are different methods from beach wells to open intake. Then the water is mechanically, physically and chemically pretreated before it enters the actual separation step, the reverse osmosis membrane, where the separation of salts through a membrane uh, uh, will, will actually happen. And then we, this has a, a recovery or a conversion rate of around 45%. And then the produced permeate, clean water, is remineralized in order to make it better for drinking and then practically distributed to the network. And I mean, just important to secure a, a reliable operation of the plant is a good selection of the location to get good quality seawater abstracted have a pretreatment before the membranes, and then, of course, a, a little conservative design with good quality materials, a proper level of automation, a good chemical regime. Um, and then this plant can operate very well for a long period of time. And in Kuwait, for example, my first project, which we delivered in 1988, containerized system, it is still working today. So that means with the good maintenance, a good original design, good quality products. The lifetime of such plants can be actually well beyond 25 years. We are an Austrian-based company, which is now part of an Abu Dhabi-based um, uh, infrastructure group. We are in the business since uh, more than 60 years. We, we started actually in around before 1980 in Iraq in providing containerized solutions for doing drinking water from the rivers. And then with, with the development of technology and invention of membrane technology uh, in 19, early, uh, early 90s, after 1980, we, we, we ventured into this technology as, as a pioneer, one of the pioneers, I could say, with the first desalination plants in Saudi Arabia, uh, 1985, uh, for, for two royal palaces. And then the first desalination plants for seawater using also hollow fiber membranes which required a very high pressure. At the time we, we concluded with Abu Dhabi Water Electricity Department in 1989 and then supplied eight plants, um, uh, seven in the UAE and one in Oman. 
So, and over the time, we continued to build desalination plants up to 150,000 cubic meter per day, recently in India. And we, we could see also the development of the technology to reach that level of maturity today. And we feel extremely confident that this is the best solution, really, to desalinate water from the sea and at a very competitive rate. Est-ce qu'on peut avoir une idée sur le coût de la technologie utilisée pour le dessalement d'eau de mer? So I think cost is 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 a big concern. I'm 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 very much aware of that. I mean, there is there is some other concerns in relation to using this technology. The other part is complexity of the technology. This is very clear, and operability to ensure that. Uh, such a plant can be operated well in order to ensure that it's producing water in a reliable and sustainable manner. First of all, cost, cost of investment in, in this technology. Well, the best way to have a cost-efficient solution is to have a good quality, to have a good design, and to ensure that the lifetime of the system to produce water is as long as possible, which is in reality 20 to 25 years. So one formula which is very much, I would say, applicable for the technology, for the capital cost. So that means a plant of, say, 20,000 uh, cubic meter per day production would be 20 to 25 million dollar as a capital investment, all included, to give you a reference. So the second part is the cost of, of water production, which is the biggest concern, because obviously this technology um, needs more energy, practically, to produce clean water. Now, when we started 35 years ago, we had around 7.5 to 8 kilowatt hours per cubic meter of electricity to put into the system to get one cubic meter practically out. Now, today, the maturity of technology has progressed very well. We have reached uh, a power consumption of something like 3 to 3.5 kilowatt hours per cubic meter, which then defines also um, the main cost element per cubic meter of water. Because like in Morocco, you have 11 cents, what I understand, per kilowatt hours. We have seen that Kingdom is also trying to, to utilize renewable water resources which are further inland or the Atlas Mountains, catch the water and then practically pipe it to the places of demand and do a treatment. Now, we understand that this is a very also costly exercise because of infrastructure cost. There is cost of pumping the water, which is electricity. Uh, um, and of course, there's another factor which we now really feel more and more strong is really the impact of global warming and of course the reduction of rain in principal terms, you know, in order to fill the dams and make the water. So there is no other option to secure water supply to the people, to the industry and the agriculture, and to avoid a kind of a competition, right, on who takes the water, because this is a very critical issue. Uh, and so that's why reverse osmosis is a, the best choice uh, in order to complement water resources to provide water supply security in the kingdom. We also studied the subject very clearly also for Africa, also to build, say, smaller systems, decentralized solutions, which also allow to, to produce water in locations which do not have the infrastructure, the power infrastructure. Maybe also for the southern part of Morocco, this is, could be a good option, that we, we combine the, the water production, the desalination with renewable power production in terms of solar and in terms of wind, which has very good conditions in Morocco, and which then significantly reduces the cost of water.